How's it going? This is Michael Hatzis, and in this tutorial we're going to check out how to warp tracks that start off with something besides drums in Ableton Live. In the previous video we looked at how to warp a full track when the drums came in right at the beginning of the track. We know that drums are a good indicator of timing and again they came in right at the beginning of the video so it was pretty easy to warp. Now if you haven't checked out that video, I recommend checking it out at this point because this one is going to pick up where that one left off. So the track I'm going to be using for this video is a remix I made for a former Dubspot student. He goes by in Transic and he's a very talented young producer, all around good guy. And if you want to grab this track along with a couple other remixes in the original, it's going to be released on Deadly Viper Recordings and should be out shortly. Okay, so let's get started. Now, first thing we want to do, like we did in the first video, is we go into Preferences, go to the Record Warp Launch tab, and just make sure Auto Warp Long Samples is turned off. Okay. Again, what that does is tell Live when we import a full track or a full song, not to warp it. Okay. And again, that'll just save us a couple steps. Also, we just want to make sure that the warp switch for the track we're warping is turned off. Remember, we got to tap out the tempo. And if we have warp turned on and we're tapping out a tempo, the track is going to change tempos based on the tempo up top. So it's going to sound a bit wonky. Okay, so just make sure that the warp switch for the track we're warping is turned off. So I just want to mention that I'm using Live 9 in this video. And that if you're using Live 8, this technique should work pretty much the same way. Alright, so if you're using Live 8, don't worry. So let's play back the tracks that we're dealing with. Alright, and again, you'll notice that. We start off, there's some atmospherics. Not the easiest thing to figure out timing, okay? So the trick is when we start off with something like atmospherics, a melody, vocals, percussion, basically anything besides a steady drum beat, what we want to do is go to the part in the song where we find a steady beat, okay? So I'm going to move the start marker forward to find that steady beat. Right, and it comes in right there. Okay, so that's that's the trick to the whole thing is you want to use the part of the song that has that steady beat. Okay, so you don't want to use things like uh, in the beginning there's like a drum build up, maybe a fill. You don't want to use that. You want to go into where the beat is steady. Okay, it's a lot easier to you know figure out timing for us and for live. Once we move our start marker over there, right, we just use the same two steps we did in the previous video. First step was to tap out the tempo. I'm just going to go into key mapping and you can see I already have the uh, tap tempo mapped to the key. So I'm going to play back the track, tap out, all right, along with the beat. And I got 108 close enough. Like I said, we just need an approximate tempo. Okay, so that was step one. Give live an approximate timing. Step two is tell live where the track starts. And again, we're going to use this part as where the track starts, right? Because it's easier for live to figure out timing of a steady beat. I'm just moving my start marker around close to where I feel that kick starts. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Now the second part in step two is to set 1.1.1 here. So now that I clicked set 1.1.1 here, we'll notice a couple things. Okay, we'll notice that warp is turned on. We have other warp markers. But again, the track isn't warped yet. We have to actually go in and tell live to warp it. From the first video, we just went in, right click. We have these options. And since this is a straight track, meaning drums are rigid, they're made by a drum machine, the drums aren't made by a human, and most of the time they should be lined up to the bar. So again, what we want to do is use warp from here straight. Now, this entry is a little bit misleading, okay? Because to me, it makes it seem like what it's going to do is just warp from here to the end of the track. When what it's really doing is it's going to warp this stuff, and then it's also going to warp that stuff. So it's going to warp this tricky to warp melodic content. So now I'm just going to go back to the start marker and warp it by choosing warp from here straight. So the track is now warped. Live tells me the BPM is 109, and that's correct. I made the track. 
So I'm just going to go to the global tempo and type in 109 so that live is now playing the track back at the exact tempo that it was made at. Remember, we got to do a couple things. We want to go to the end of the track and make sure that everything is lined up. Here's the beginning of the bar. My kick drum starts here. Might not seem like a big deal, but anyone who's DJed knows that, you know, when you're beat matching, you got to have everything lined up nice and tight. Okay, and it's the same thing with warping. You want to get everything nice and tight. So I'm just going to hold the shift key, okay, and slide that transient marker over to the beginning of the kick drum. Okay, I'm going to let go of the shift key and then just drag it over to the beginning of the bar. Remember, just like in the first video, the reason I didn't actually add a warp marker is because when we just slide the transient over, what happens is that live readjusts the timing of the entire track. So what that means in this situation is that live also adjusted the hard to figure out atmospheric part in the beginning. So let's now go back to the beginning and check that out. And what we're looking for here is a nice even bar count. So I can see here that I have 24 bars from the beginning to the one. So that works for me. All right, so that means if I play, I move my playhead to negative 24. So if I start playing it here, I know that there's gonna be exactly 24 bars to get to here. All right, so that works for me. So just gonna go in, tighten it up as well. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna hold shift, slide the transient marker over to here and just slide it over. So to me now the track is warped correctly and I'm just gonna hit the save button. Okay, and again what that does is that's gonna update the ASD file with these new warp settings. So as long as I keep the ASD file in the same directory as this file, my MP3, WAV file, whatever it is, I shouldn't ever have to warp the track again. And that's basically it. So thanks for checking out this tutorial. Be sure to check out dubspot.com for more production tutorials, articles, and tips. And if you'd like to check out my music, you could do so at soundcloud.com backslash bangingflute. Thanks again, and take care. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.